In the annals of Central and Eastern Alpine folklore, the legend of Krampus looms large, a narrative traditionally employed to ensure children's behavior during the festive season. However, this seemingly innocent tale conceals a bone-chilling reality. Krampus is the personification of an ancient and extraordinarily formidable Nosferatu vampire. The monstrous entity that is Krampus finds its origins in the actions of a Nosferatu elder named Malak. Famed for his captivation with human superstitions and the primal fear they could incite, Malak recognized an opportunity within the Alpine legend of Krampus. His ambition was to give form to a figure that would not just inhabit human nightmares, but hold dominion over them. Using the kindred's dread-inducing process of transformation, known as the Embrace, Malak converted a human into a beast, birthing a being whose terror far surpassed the original folklore. However, the relationship between sire and child was fraught with tension and rivalry. Over the centuries, Krampus matured in strength and cunning, slowly but surely eclipsing his master. A pivotal moment arrived when Krampus, in a daring display of power, committed diablerie on Malak, consuming his sire's potency and wisdom. This audacious act of vampire patricide not only elevated Krampus' standing among the kindred, but also drew the attention of the Niktuku, the feared bloodline of vampires believed to be the original progeny of the Nosferatu antediluvian. Bound by a potent blood bond to their progenitor since their embrace, the Niktuku are notorious hunters, especially of those Nosferatu who dare to defy their ancient forebears' will. The Diableri of Malak thrust Krampus into the spotlight as a significant threat, placing him squarely under the Niktuku's scrutiny. Yet Krampus has masterfully evaded the Niktuku's relentless pursuit for centuries. His survival can be attributed to a potent cocktail of his inherent Nosferatu cunning, formidable powers, and deep comprehension of both kindred and kin. Moreover, Krampus has ingeniously intertwined himself with human culture and legend, utilizing the guise of folklore as both a shield against threats and a weapon to instill fear. Geographically, Krampus's territory spans across Central and Eastern Europe, focusing particularly on the Alpine regions where his legend carries significant weight. With the onset of winter, he emerges from his lair, becoming a living embodiment of terror that starkly opposes the prevailing holiday cheer. His towering figure, complete with a hunched back and twisted horns, his deathly pallor and his use of birch branches not as symbols of holiday tradition but as instruments of punishment, all contribute to a grotesque parody of the human form. Indeed, no discussion of Krampus would be complete without mentioning his dark minions, a horde of ghouls fashioned after the elves of traditional Christmas lore. Yet, these creatures bear little resemblance to the cheerful, industrious elves of popular imagination. They are grotesque parodies of their festive counterparts, forged in the image of their master's twisted vision. These ghouls, referred to in hushed tones as the Krampus Kin or Krampus's Elves, are short in stature but intimidating in presence. Their skin is pitch black, their eyes are hauntingly luminescent white, and their pointed ears give them an eerie, non-human appearance. They move with a quickness and agility that belies their small size, darting in and out of the shadows as they carry out Krampus's dark bidding. Krampus's elves serve as his eyes and ears, roaming the territories under his control and beyond. They keep him apprised of the goings-on in the supernatural and human worlds, providing him with valuable information that allows him to stay one step ahead of his enemies, most notably the Niktuku. In addition to their role as scouts and informants, the Krampus kin also help enforce their master's brutal justice. During the winter season, when Krampus's power is at its peak, these ghouls assist in the abduction and punishment of the wicked. Their small size and swift movements allow them to infiltrate human dwellings with ease, snatching those deemed deserving of Krampus's punishment. However, despite their terrifying appearance and unsettling tasks, these ghouls are not inherently evil. They are bound to Krampus through the potent blood bond of the embrace, their will subjugated to his. For them, servitude to Krampus is not a choice, but a condition of their existence. Krampus's interactions with other supernatural beings are as complex as his history. 
He maintains an uneasy truce with local werewolf packs, using his influence over human fear and superstition to avoid encroaching on their territories. With other vampires, especially those outside of his clan, he maintains a stance of detached caution. His formidable powers, ancient lineage, and the infamous act of Diablerie have solidified his position as a figure of respect, if not camaraderie, within vampire society. Beyond his relationships and territorial holdings, Krampus has left a long-lasting impact on the very fabric of kindred and kind society. Each year, as the nights grow longer and colder, whispers of the Christmas Devil start to circulate, chilling the hearts of both children and adults alike. His name is invoked as a deterrent, a warning to those who might stray from the path of righteousness, a stark reminder of the punishment that awaits those who embrace wickedness. As the festive season approaches, the folklore surrounding Krampus gains renewed vitality transforming the once-celebratory jingling of bells on a cold winter's night into a dire warnings of his imminent approach. Families gather around the hearth, whispering tales of the Christmas devil who punishes the wicked, all the while oblivious to the terrifying reality of these stories. His existence has added a somber undertone to the holiday cheer, a reminder of the omnipresent darkness lurking beneath the surface. For the kindred, his rise to power serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of ambition and the ruthless pursuit of power. The Sabbat, known for their defiance of the Camarilla and the traditions it upholds, are drawn to figures of power and rebellion within vampire society, and Krampus fits this mold perfectly. The Sabbat's interest in Krampus is multifaceted. On a symbolic level, Krampus represents a powerful manifestation of rebellion against established order. His audacious act of diablerie, his defiance against the Niktuku, and his thriving existence on the fringes of kindred society are all potent examples of what the Sabbat venerate. Resistance against the stagnant norms of the Camarilla and the unyielding assertion of personal freedom and power. Over the years, Krampus has become a central figure in the Sabbat's yuletide rituals. Invoking his name and legend during these ceremonies serves a dual purpose. Firstly, it is a direct act of defiance, a stark contrast to the Camarilla's preference for subtlety and discretion. Secondly, it serves to embolden the Sabbat members, reinforcing their commitment to personal freedom and rebellion against the oppressive structures of the ancient vampire society. Moreover, the emergence of a new faction within the Sabbat, the Children of Krampus, is a testament to his growing influence within the sect. This faction, composed of younger Sabbat members disillusioned with the long-standing war against the Camarilla, revere Krampus as a symbol of resistances and independent power. They aspire to emulate his audacity, his survival instincts, and his ability to instill fear even in the final nights. However, this reverence is not without its dangers. The Camarilla, already wary of Krampus's growing power, view this faction's rise with significant alarm. Meanwhile, the Niktuku's relentless pursuit of Krampus serves as a constant reminder of the dangerous path these children of Krampus tread. Yet in the spirit of their namesake, they continue to defy, embodying the very essence of the Sabbat's rebellious spirit. In the throes of the final nights, Krampus's activities have become increasingly noticeable, and his actions carry significant implications for both kindred and kind. While many vampires retreat into the safety of their hidden refuges fearing the prophesied Gehenna, Krampus appears to relish in the chaos. His movements have grown bolder, his punishments more severe, and his influence over mortal fear and superstition stronger than ever. Recent reports from the Kindred Underground suggest a significant surge in Krampus's activity in the Alpine regions during these tumultuous times. Traditionally associated with the winter season, his presence is now felt year-round and his territory appears to be expanding beyond its historical confines. There are rumors of strange happenings and unexplained disappearances in regions as far flung as Scandinavia and the British Isles. With whispers of the Christmas Devil's influence echoing in hushed tones through the kindred grapevine, the tale of Krampus is a complex web of fear, power, and survival. It is a testament to the shadowy interplay between human folklore and kindred reality. 
a testament written in the blood of his sire, and read in the fearful whispers of children and vampires alike.